Hey, what's up guys, how's it going? A few of you told me that uh, you like my drum tone, so I wanna go through and tell you how I get my sound. Everything from what heads I use, to how I tune it, what mics I use, where, where to put them, even EQ and compression. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things, and uh, let's get to it. The first thing is I need to change my drum heads because they're pretty old. You know, the toms have a lot, of, uh, a lot of nicks and marks on them, and they're pretty old and stretched. If you take a look at the snare, it's totally worn out in the center, it's pretty stretched. I bet once I take it off, it'll just dip forever. So let's get to it. Okay, now I wanna start with the toms because they take the longest. Uh, the bottom heads don't need to be changed. There's no reason to play on them. So unless you accidentally drop one and it rips, you shouldn't need to replace it. Um, now what I will do is start by tuning the bottom heads and getting, where getting them exactly where I want them. Then I'm gonna go back and put the top heads on. So first things first, let's get all this extra stuff out of the way so we have room to work. All right, here we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the top heads off. You wanna be careful to do it evenly so you don't bend the rim. Here we go. Okay, now that we have all the old heads off, let's go ahead and get the bottom heads in tune. So I flipped these drums upside down, make them easy to get to. I moved the floor tom so we have some space to get down there and work. Uh, now, always make sure that when you're tuning the drum that it's up in the air so you can hear what the head's actually doing. Also, on that note, I'm a big fan of suspension mounts. I hate toms, you know, when there's like a a snare stand holding it up, it just ruins the tone. It doesn't let it resonate, you know, the way a drum really should. To me, a drum never sounds better, especially a tom, when you're holding it up in the air and you hit it and it just resonates for days, so. Anyway, when I'm tuning my drums, I wanna go ahead and have them up in the position that they're gonna be when I'm playing them, because that's how we're used to hearing it. Okay, when it comes to drum tuning, everyone has their own way of doing things. I'm gonna show you how I do things and what sound that I like to get. For me, that's always clear pen stripes on the top and clear ambassadors on the bottom. And we're talking Remo here. Okay, now when I tune my toms, I like a good range. I want the low tom to sit really low, and I want the high one to sit at a comfortable tone. I think of it like a voice. Boom. So that's what I'm gonna find in this drum. Each drum has its own range. Um, I'm not looking for a specific pitch. I just want the drums to sound big and loud and to resonate well. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's an A flat or an A. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what sounds good to my ear right off the bat. Again, moving evenly around the lugs. Now I'm going, even, I'm going around the lugs and I'm listening to how each one sounds. I'm also feeling the tension on each tension rod. And that gives me a good idea of how even it is across the drum. Okay, now if I need to raise or lower the pitch of this drum, I'm gonna move them all evenly from this point on. Okay, now let's move down the line and just get each drum even with it, within itself. Okay, now when I make my final tweaks and adjustments, I usually like to be working the key to the right or clockwise because it brings the pitch up. Whenever you're tuning an instrument, especially a timpani, which is what I learned on, uh, you're gonna need to tune up to the pitch. It's easiest for our ear to pick that up. So again, when tuning each individual note or each individual tension rod, I'm gonna bend up to that pitch, never down, so. Okay, see how the floor toms sound. Okay, I think I have them about where I want them. So now let's get these top heads on. Now the first part is to make sure the head is sitting evenly in the middle. You don't want it tilted to one side because as you start to tighten it down, it won't tune evenly. And the name of the game here for good resonance is to be as even as possible all the way around the drum. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure the head is sitting comfortably in the center, and then we're gonna finger tighten all of the tension rods around the drum. Okay, now once the lugs are finger tight, now we wanna start adding a little bit of tension evenly all the way around the drum. Some people say you have to go in a star pattern. I don't think you have to. As long as you're even, you can go in any order you want, just playing a little bit at a time. Now as we start to add a little tension to the drum, you'll hear the head start to crack if it's a new head. That's totally normal. So you might wanna help it stretch a little bit. You know, just like a new string on a guitar. It'll take some time to settle in. Now some people will say, you know, you gotta put your knuckles into it or you gotta stand on the drum. That's ridiculous, you don't have to do that. 
All you need is a little pressure to help it stretch, and that'll do the job. Now let's continue tightening it until it gets until it sounds about the same as the bottom head. Okay, so now I have the top heads pretty much matching the bottom ones, and here's how it sounds. Still doesn't sound that great, if you ask me. So what I want to do is tune the top heads slightly tighter than the bottom ones, because I like the way it gives a nice even sustain, and it helps kill a little bit of the unwanted overtones. Some people go the opposite way. Some tune the top head a little bit deeper than the bottom one, and they claim it gives a really cool down bend, like a downward pitch bend, like a boom. That's not really the sound I'm going for, so I like to go a little bit higher with the top head. Okay, now that's still not awesome if you ask me. That sounds kind of floppy, kind of uncontrolled. So uh, what I like to do is add a little bit of dampening. The Evans clear plastic rings are the perfect amount if you ask me. That's just the sound I'm going for. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on. All right, sounds pretty good to me. I went ahead and glued down all the rings with some adhesive spray that I bought from Lowe's. You can find it at any hardware store. It's 3M adhesive spray. I play uh, fairly regularly, and sometimes I play outdoors, so I don't want these to blow off in the wind. But you don't have to glue them down. They do a pretty decent job of staying on, even without the adhesive spray. Okay, now let's get that snare tuned up. Okay, so sure enough, the old head was totally stretched out and it had no tone, no life left in it. Um, put the new head on, now we're going to do the same as with the toms. I'm going to get it nice and centered and start applying even tension all the way around. Here we go. Okay, so now I have sort of a medium tension on the snare head. Now, on the topic of tuning, uh, snare drums are very personal. Um, it depends on the song that you're playing, the style of music. There's a lot of things to consider. First and foremost, when considering what sound you're going for is what type of drum you have. Okay, so I have a 1965 steel shelled snare. It's a 14 by 5 and a half inch drum. You're going to get a medium snare sound. Now, personally, I like my snares to be a little tight and a little bright. I use a Remo Ambassador uh, coated on my snare. Um, now, the bottom head's going to play a different role for you than the top head. Uh, you know, your, most of your tone and your attack is going to come from that top head, but the bottom head uh, interacts with the snares. Um, so, for me, I like to keep it generally kind of loose, actually. Um, I found that that doesn't seem to be a problem, going really tight with the top head and going loose with the bottom. It gives me just the sound and the feel that I'm looking for. But play around with it, find what works for you. Okay, so now, this, we've got sort of a medium sound here. Let me show you what it sounds like. Let me turn the snares on. kind of low for this drum, so I'm going to keep taking it up a little bit. Okay, now that's starting to get kind of where I like it, but there's way too much overtone in ring for me. So uh, as for dampening, I like to use the moon gels because they, they give you a little more versatility than the Evans rings do. Uh, they, the rings just tend to be a little too heavy for the snare, so I like to, you know, start with one moon gel. If that's not enough, add a second one. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the before and after for that. There's the before. Honestly, I kind of like that sound, because if you want it real dry, you can hit it right in the middle. But if you want a little ring and attack, you still get it if you move towards the edge, especially with the rim shots. So, now uh, let's say I'm doing some recording and I really want to control that sound. Well, then I can throw another moon gel. I like to start on the opposite side of the head, right? Let's be even. So, close to the rim. 
pretty dry sounding. All right, so that sounds good. Uh, on the bass drum, I'm using an Evans EMAD. On the batter side, it gives you that little foam ring that you can put in there, give a nice bit of damping. I have a small pillow in there, thanks to the EMAD. It gives you more airspace inside the drum, bigger, fatter sound. Um, I have whatever came with the drum set on the resonant side. I think it's a Remo yeah, with the Mafex logo on it. So I haven't ever changed that, haven't needed to. It's got a porthole in it, keeps the air moving nice. Uh, same thing on batter and resonant. I go as low as I can without wrinkles. And that's it. It sounds good. Might sound kind of dead in the room when you're playing it. But once you put a mic in there and EQ it just right, it'll sound huge. So, there's your bass drum, snare, and toms. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and throw the mics on it. Okay, for the toms, I'm using Sennheiser E604s. They clip right onto the shell, and they just sound dang good. Now, these mics are directional, so you wanna point them right at the middle of the drum. You wanna get as close as you can to reject all the other noise so you get less bleed. Like, if I hit the snare drum really hard, I don't want it to come right through into the tom, so I'm gonna to try to angle this as much as I can, not at the snare drum. Um, so I might swing it over to the side here like that. Uh, also, the hi-hat is big culprit. I'm always getting hi-hat bleed into the other mics. So try to point it away as much as you can, and try to point it at the middle of the drum as much as you can. It's always gonna be a compromise, but just, you know, try things out, see what works for you. Now on the floor toms here, I know I'm gonna have my ride cymbal and the china cymbal, so I'm gonna put this mic out of the way of those two cymbals. Once again, point it at the middle of the drum, about as close as I can stand to get it. Now this one I can afford to come a little further back with, so I'm gonna do that. It's aiming a little, for, a little closer to the snare now, but it's far enough away that I think I can get enough rejection out of it, and now I'm well out of the way of the china symbol, and that thing can really bleed into the mics. All right, for the snare, I'm gonna use SM57. Nothing crazy there. That's pretty much the standard from most people I talk to. Now, when placing the snare drum mic, my biggest concern is gonna be rejecting the hi-hat. So I like to place it kind of close, uh, pointing directly away from the hi-hat, as close, as low to the rim as I can get it, and pointed right at the middle of the drum. Now something to consider, because it's directional and that the way that the capsule works, there's gonna be out of phase material coming in through the back. So if you slide the mic too far over the snare, you're gonna get the same sound coming in out of phase behind the mic. Kind of confusing, but you don't want that. So. I like to put the diaphragm right at the rim of the drum so that anything coming from behind the capsule is not going to mess with my snare sound. Okay, so there it is, close to the rim, pointed away from the hi-hat at the middle of the drum. That's the best that I've found. Some people like to come in through the middle of the toms. That's cool, but I would still pick up a lot of hi-hat noise, so I'm going to go ahead and stick it there. Okay, now for the kick drum, I use a D6 Audix, and it already has a pretty hyped high end and a good mid, mid kind of scoop. So it gives me sort of the sound that I'm looking for right out, of, right out of the box. And I'll talk more about that later when we go over EQ. Now I'm gonna mount this thing inside the kick drum using the Kelly shoe, which is like an internal mounting system. I would highly recommend it to all drummers, you know, whether you're gigging regularly or in the studio. Uh, it keeps the mic in the same spot every time. Suspension mounted with rubber bands. I like to keep mine pretty close to the batter head so I get a lot of that uh, clicky sound. Because uh, for the type of music I play, that's what helps the kick drum cut through the mix. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in there, and then I'll show you what we're using instead of overheads. So all the mics are in place, now let's get some cymbals on here. Okay, now that we got the cymbals on, let me show you what I'm using for floor mics. So my cymbals are getting picked up mostly by the PZM mics that I've set on the floor here. I've got one for the left side of the drum set, and I got one over here on the right side. And that's from my perspective, because I like to hear the drums as they sound when I play them. Okay, so everything you've heard so far while I was tuning was from the floor mics and a little bit from the room mic that's in the bathroom. I'll talk more about that later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what all the drums sound like through each of their individual mics one at a time. Now this is before any EQ or compression has been added, and it's just each mic that you're hearing, okay? Starting with the kick drum. All right, now onto the snare drum. 
Tom one. Tom two. Three. And the big guy. All right, not bad. Now let's hear how the whole kit sounds. All the mics going at once with the room mics and the floor mics. Okay. All right, cool. Now let's go play with some effects. I'm gonna take the same sample I just recorded and start to add some EQ and compression, and I'll show you guys how I get my final sound in the box inside the computer. All right, see you there. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and there's the drum part I just recorded. So let's have a listen with no effects just yet. Okay, so first I'm going to have a look at the floor mics. Here's what they sound like with no effects. Okay, but because I'm using these mostly just to pick up the cymbals, I want to go ahead and roll off most of the low end, add a little bit of sparkle up top, and then I went in and carved out a little bit of the low mids around 550, just to clean it up a little bit. Here's what it sounds like with the EQ applied. Pretty drastic difference. Okay, so let's start adding some of the other drums. Now here's the bass drum with uh, no effects on it. Thanks to the D6, it already sounds pretty good. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, come in here and add a time adjuster delay because when the spot mic is so close to the kick drum, it actually arrives quicker than when it does in the room mics because those are a few feet away. So um, by adding a few samples of delay, in this case about 38, uh, plus whatever latencies in the EQ and compressor I'm about to add, uh, it'll end up putting it about the same spot compared to the room mics and therefore it will be in phase and not out of phase. So play around with that, see, uh, see, you know, see what works and what doesn't. So there's the time adjuster. Now again, this is the kick drum, so the EQ I'm using is going to enhance the low end. I'm going to scoop out a lot of the mids here. I'm going to add a lot of attack, usually somewhere between 4 and 5k. Uh, and then I want to add, you know, just some high end, some air up top. And here's what it sounds like with the EQ. Before. After. Pretty cool. Okay, now compression. Now on the R compressor here, I have the ratio set to about four to one. Uh, kind of slow attack and kind of quick release. I guess medium to slow attack and quick release. Um, the threshold is set just to remove, I don't know, let's see. Probably no more than about three dB. And then I'll just add that over here with the makeup gain. Okay, moving right along on the snare channel. We're going to do the same thing as with the kick drum. Add a time adjuster to make the mics line up. We're going to add some EQ here. I, I rolled off the low end. I extremely hyped the high end just because snares tend to sound kind of dull with, unless you brighten them up a bit. Um, I scooped out a lot of the annoying frequencies in the room that I didn't like. But let me give you a before and after with EQ. Here's before. Here's after. Much brighter and crispier. Okay, and similar with the compressor on the snare, I'm just going to take off a few dB, add about 4 to 1. And uh, again, kind of a medium to slow attack with a fast release. Okay, so with the toms, it's going to be a very similar thing, time adjuster. 
EQ is going to enhance the low end, roll off anything below, I don't know, whatever you think the fundamental tone of the drum is. I usually bring it up until uh, I start noticing a difference in the low end, and then I'll bring it back down. And anything below there is just mud that we don't need. Okay, I'm going to scoop out some roominess, uh, you know, just below 500 in this case. And then uh, I'm going to add about, add some attack at about 4K. And then uh, maybe just a little bit of air up top. Same deal with the compression. Now the only difference with the compressor is uh, the longer the sustain is on the toms, the more release I'll start to add, especially as they get bigger. So tom one, quick, kind of a quick release. And I'm going to go through and add that for the rest of the toms. You'll notice with the EQ that I'm going to start to introduce lower and lower frequencies as we go down. Obviously the biggest floor tom is going to have a lot lower frequency content than the higher toms. Add the compressors. Okay, so let's have a look at the room mic now, which we talked about earlier. This one I put in the bathroom because it has kind of a reverby tile kind of sound, and it's right next to my drum room. Okay, so here is a before sample of the room mic. Sounds kind of boring. So uh, I threw an 1176 type compressor on here, the Bomb Factory version, and um, went all buttons in to really make it pump. And as you see, we're not even hitting the needle that hard. But it's having quite an effect on the sound. Okay. Um, as far as the EQ on this one, really I'm just taking off a lot of the low end, anything below 100. Remove some of the uh, boxy low mid sounds. And then some of the uh, extreme highs I pulled off. And apparently there was an annoying sound uh, somewhere around 1,000. Uh, now, you'll notice on this channel I added the EQ after compression. That's because I really wanted the, the kick drum to affect the compressor. Uh, but I didn't want the low end in my final room, room mic sound. So I added the EQ after the compressor. Okay, now let's, uh, let's hear what that sounds like. Pretty cool. Put everything together. Now I'm going to send the snare to a slap delay and uh, reverb. Sort of fatten it up, give it some space and some, uh, some sustain with the reverb. And here's what we have as of now. Sounded pretty cool. Okay, now in a mix, I'd want to squash this even further on the drum bus, and the bus is the channel that all the individual channels go through. Uh, here's a multi-band compressor, C4. It's going to tighten it up a bit. Another 1176. This one's not hitting nearly as hard as the one on the room mic. This one's just sorted to help tighten it up a bit more and glue, every glue everything together. Kind of adds some beef also. Now, um... One thing that I've been playing around with lately is uh, harmonic distortion. Here I have a air enhancer, and it's going to add harmonic content and coloration. And one thing this does, especially in a mix, is help the drums to just uh, never be covered up. They're always present, thanks to the extra stuff that this adds. Now I'm also parallel processing this, which means I have an identical plug-in here on two buses that are getting the exact same signal. Only difference is on one, I'm not adding any harmonic distortion. I'm going to go ahead and bypass that. So we have clean signal mixed with distorted signal and this is what that gives us. Pretty cool, huh? So mixing has a lot to do with your final sound. I'm going to give you a quick before and after. Here's the before. and after. Okay, so that's how I get my drum sound. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment area below. So, otherwise, see you guys next time.